Welcome to this video where we'll cover reading one of the quantitative methods topic within the CFA level one syllabus. Reading one revolves around the time value of money, which forms the basis for cash flow and security valuation. The goal of this video is not to give you an all encompassing overview of the reading. Instead, the purpose is to provide a summary of the main formulae you need to know and to practice using them through exercises. We'll start by introducing the main types of formulae and we'll then go through seven exercises to consolidate your understanding of these. The first formula identifies how the present value of an investment, which earns a rate of return for a given number of years, influences its future value. The formula also accounts for compounding. In other words, if the investment is compounded semi-annually, then M would be 2, as interest would be paid twice a year. If the number of compounding periods becomes infinite, then we say that interest is compounded continuously. In this case, we can use this formula here to calculate the future value. EAR, or effective annual rate, gives the future value directly, unlike the stated annual interest rates. Once again, you can find the formulae for continuous and discrete compounding in the top row. Moving down, we have the formulae to calculate the future value and the present value of an annuity. We also have the formula to calculate the growth rate of an investment and the formula to calculate the present value of a perpetuity. A perpetuity is simply an annuity that extends indefinitely. Next, let's go through the exercises where we'll use these formulae. The first question is what is the value of £55,000 in three years if invested today at a stated annual interest rate of 4% compounded quarterly? The question is asking us for the future value of the investment. Therefore, we have a choice of two formulae. Since we know that the investment is compounded quarterly, which is discrete and not continuous, we know that we need to use the first formula. Let's start by considering the inputs for this formula. The present value is £55,000. The stated interest rate is 4%. The number of years is 3 and the number of compounding periods is 4, as the investment is compounded quarterly. Therefore, we now have all the inputs we need to know in order to use this formula. As per the formula, the future value of this investment is the present value multiplied by 1 plus the stated annual interest rate divided by the number of compounding periods to the power of the number of years multiplied by the number of compounding periods. This gives us 61,000 and therefore at the end of the three years, our future value is this figure. The next question is what is the value of a 200,000 pound investment for three years with a stated annual rate of 5% compounded continuously? Once again, it's asking us for the future value. Only this time, it's asking us to compound continuously, so we can use this second formula here. The inputs for this are the present value, which is 200,000, the stated annual interest rate, which is 5%, and the number of years, which is 3. The future value is therefore the present value multiplied by E, to the power of the stated annual rate times the number of years. Therefore, the future value of the investments is £232,000. Let's now move on to exercise three. Question number three says a stated annual interest rate of 3% is quoted. If that rate is equal to an effective annual rate of 3.05%, then is interest being compounded daily, quarterly, or semi-annually? Here we know that we need to use the EAR formula, 
and we know that we need to use the discrete formula as the potential answers are daily, quarterly or semi-annually. The way to answer this kind of a question is to trial the three options until you find the right one. So the inputs for the EAR are the stated annual rates and the number of compounding periods. We know the stated annual rate is 3% and we're going to start by assuming semi-annual compounding which means m would be 2. The EAR is 1 plus the periodic interest rate, which is the stated annual rate divided by the number of compounding periods, and then we take this to the power of the number of compounding periods minus 1. This gives us 3.02%, which is not the right answer. Next, let's try daily compounding to see if that makes a difference. Therefore, M would be 365, as there are 365 days in a year. As you can see, this gives us an EAR of 3.05%, which means that interest is indeed being compounded daily, as this equals the EAR in the question. Let's now move on to question 4. Question 4 says that two years from now, John will receive the first of two annual payments of £10,000. He earns 7% annually from investments and plans to retire in five years. How much will the two payments be worth when he retires? This question is an annuity question as we're receiving constant cash flows of £10,000. The formula we need to use is the future value of an annuity, as we want to know how much the payments will be worth when he retires, in other words, at a future date. This question can be divided into two components, as per our diagram. Firstly, we need to use the annuity formula in order to calculate what the two investments will be worth at the end of the two years. All we need to do here is substitute our inputs into this formula. As shown, we're taking the annuity, which is £10,000, and multiplying this by 1 plus the interest rate to the power of the number of years minus 1 divided by the interest rate. This gives us 20700 However, that's not the answer to the question as we need to know the future value when he retires. In other words, at the end of year five. To calculate this, we can use the future value formula. Therefore, we need to substitute our inputs into this first formula here. The value at t equals three is 20,700. So we multiply this by one plus the interest rate. We don't need to divide this by anything as we're assuming the investment is compounded annually. We then take this figure to the power of two. Now the reason that it's to the power of two is because t equals five minus t equals three equals two. This gives us the final future value when John retires at t equals five, which is 23,700 pounds. To recap, we firstly use the annuity formula to calculate what the two investments will be worth at the end of the two years. We then use the future value formula to calculate the value of this at the end of the five years. Let's now move on to exercise five. Sarah receives 10 annual £90,000 payments starting one year from today and is able to receive 5% annually. What lump sum today is equivalent to the future annual payments? In this case, we once again have an annuity, as we have 10 payments which are all equal, but we need to use the present value instead of the future value formula, as we need to calculate the lump sum today, which is equivalent to the future annual payments. The inputs for this formula are the annuity, the number of years, and the interest rates. Once again, we can substitute the inputs into the formula. As shown, we're taking the annuity, which is £90,000, and multiplying this 
by 1 minus 1 divided by 1 plus the interest rate to the power of the number of years, which is 10, and then dividing this by the interest rate. This gives us 694,000, which is the lump sum today that is equivalent to the 10 annual £90,000 payments. Next, we have question 6. A company's sales increased from £100,000 in 2015 to £185,000 in 2020. Calculate the sales growth rate. Here, we clearly need to use the growth rate formula as we need to find the sales growth rate. The inputs we need are the future value, which is the more recent value in 2020 of 185,000, the present value, which is the initial value in 2015 of 100,000, and the number of years, which is 5, as 2020 minus 2015 is 5. The growth rate is the future value divided by the present value to the power of 1 divided by the number of years minus 1. This means that if sales would have grown constantly from 2015 to 2020, then each year they would have grown by 13.09%. Finally, let's move on to exercise 7. Question 7 is a lottery winner will get a perpetuity of £5,000 a month with the first payments in one month. If the annual discount rate is 5% compounded monthly, what is the present value of the perpetuity? Clearly the word perpetuity indicates that we need to use the perpetuity formula. The inputs are the annuity which is £5,000 a month and the interest rate. Now, it may be tempting to use 6% as the interest rate, however this would give the wrong answer. We must adjust for the fact that interest is compounded monthly, therefore we take 6% and divide it by 12. The present value of the perpetuity is therefore £5,000 divided by 0.42%, which is £1,200,000. So that's a recap of the main formulae and content of Reading 1 of Quantitative Methods of the CFA Level 1 curriculum. Please give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful and subscribe to the Excel Hub for weekly Excel tutorials, techniques and examples.